Okay, so sometimes when you're asked to find the equation of a straight line, your C value is not always visible on the picture or in one of the coordinates he's given you. So I'm going to show you one of the ways how to do this um, using the equation y equals mx plus c. So these are steps we're going to follow. Step one, we're going to find gradient as normal. We should be comfortable doing that now. Then we're going to substitute that gradient in here for m to the equation y equals mx plus c. Then we're going to choose one of our coordinates, whichever one we like, and we are going to replace x and y with whatever the numbers are in the coordinate. That will then give us a value for y, m and x, which will leave us being able to find the c value. So step four will be rearranging that to find c. Hopefully it will be a nice value, but it might not always be. And then the final step will be replacing m and c into our equation, which is what the question will be asking us to do. So let's have a look at some examples. So number one, we want to find the equation of the line passing through these two points. So we can see clearly there is no coordinate with zero something. There is no obvious y-intercept. So we're going to go get the gradient as normal. We're going to label x1, y1, and x2, y2. And I'll keep doing that, and I'll maybe stop doing that in the further examples. We will go then get the gradient. So the gradient, let's remember the formula, is y is on top, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we're working from right to left. So we've got 11 take away 3 on the top. And then minus 1, minus minus 5 on the bottom. So remember minus 1, minus minus 5, double negative turns into a big plus. So we have 11 take away 3, which is 8, minus 1 plus 5, which is 4. And 8 over 4 simplifies down to 2. So my gradient is 2. Right, then we said we were going to write this into the equation y equals mx plus c. So we know the gradient is 2, so we have y equals 2x plus c. And in previous examples, we would have had the c value and that would be us finished, but we don't have the c value. So let's pick a coordinate. I'm going to use this coordinate, I think, the minus 1 and the 11. So I'm going to use that and replace x and y with those numbers. So y is the 11. X is the number minus 1, so 2 times minus 1, remember that is minus 2, so that gives us minus 2 plus C. Now the next step was to rearrange to find C, so minus 2 goes over and becomes a plus 2, and 11 plus 2 is 13, so C is 13, which is a nice example. So the last step is to rewrite the equation, so we knew our gradient down here, was minus 2, sorry, was 2. So y equals 2x, and our c value is 13, so 2x plus 13. That is our final answer for the equation of that straight line. Let's try another one. This is from a picture this time. So we can clearly see there is no y-intercept, but we can see it's going to be a negative value because it's below the y-axis. And if it doesn't come out as that, then something's gone wrong. So we're going to label our coordinates x1, y1, and x2, y2. Now out of habit, I'll always go left to right. Our gradient will be y2 minus y1. Y is always on the top. So that will give us 3 minus minus 7, all over 4 minus minus 1. Um, double negatives, so these both turn into pluses. So we have 3 plus 7 is 10, 4 plus, five, 4 plus 1 is 5, which gives us 2 again. Bad example on my part, our gradient isn't always 2, but we're going to go with it just now. So our gradient is 2. Then we had to put that into the formula, y equals mx plus c. So y equals 2x plus Okay, from there we choose a coordinate. I try to avoid the ones with negatives. So I'm going to use this coordinate over here and replace that for my x and my y. So the y number is 3. The x number is 4. So remember 2 times 4 is 8. So the number 8 goes in here. 8 plus c. 8 is positive, which will become negative when it goes over here. So 3 take 8 is c. 
3 take away 8 is minus 5, so c is minus 5. Our last step is to rewrite the equation. So y equals, the gradient is 2, your c value is minus 5, so it's minus 5. And there is the equation of this line here. And we already said, by looking at the picture, we knew this, the y value was negative. The c value was negative, sorry, the y-intercept. So the equation of this line, 2x minus 5. That looks plausible. Okay, third example. So my examples so far, the gradient has always been a whole number, which at National 5, I hope they will always give you. However, we have to prepare you in case it's a fraction. So our working will change slightly. If it's a fraction, there'll be a wee bit more work involved to get your c value. But same as normal, still go get our gradient, x1, y1, x2, y2. So our gradient, if we subtract the y's, is 3 minus 1 on the top. And subtract your x's is 9 minus 6 on the bottom. 3 take away 1 is 2. And 9 take away 6 is 3. That won't simplify, so my gradient is a fraction. We then write out y equals mx plus c. We put in our gradient, so y equals 2 thirds of x plus c. Right, let's choose a coordinate. I'm going to go use the first one this time, the 6 and the 1. So using the 6 and the 1. So the y number is 1. And then we have 2 thirds times x. Now this time I'm going to write it actually in. So we've got 2 thirds times 6 plus c. Okay, so 2 thirds of 6. Divide by the, good old divide by the bottom times by the top. 2 thirds of 6 is 4 plus c. The 4 will go over to the other side. 1 take away 4 will give us c. c equals minus 3. So the last step is to write your equation. Now your gradient was 2 thirds and your c value was negative 3. So there is my equation of the line. y equals 2 thirds x plus c. Okay, my final example, let's go get our gradient again as normal. So our gradient is going to be 9 take away 5. We're subtracting the y's. Subtracting the x's will be minus 4 minus 6. This gives us 4 over minus 10. Now, 4 over 10 simplifies down to 2 over 5. And at this point, it's good practice to always take the negative to the top rather than leave it on the denominator. So take your negative to the top. It doesn't matter where it goes, but um, it will make your work easier if you keep it to the top of the fraction. So our gradient is minus two fifths this time. So we have y equals negative two fifths of x plus c. Now we have two coordinates to choose from. You know, from my previous examples, I like to use the ones without any negatives. So we're going to use this one here. So y will be replaced with a 5. Because remember, this is x, this is y. So y is replaced with 5. x is replaced with negative 2 fifths of 6 plus c. Okay, negative two-fifths of six doesn't work out nicely. This would normally ring alarm bells to me, but we're going to work through it because I know I've deliberately put in an example this time where C is not a value. Two-fifths of six, you would probably go to your calculator at this point. And you would do two-fifths times six, which gives us negative 2.4 plus C. Move your, your number over, minus 2.4 will become plus 2.4. Uh, Muddling up my numbers. And that gives us 
7.4 for our C value. So the equation of this line is y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 7.4. Sorry, that looks a wee bit messy there. Negative 2 fifths plus x plus 7.4. So there's your answer for that one. So we don't always, always have a nice value for C. I would ho always hope that you did, but I need to show you an example where it wasn't. You could also leave that as a fraction if you wished, um, but I think a decimal was an easier route to go there. So hopefully you followed that okay, and good luck with um, equation of a line.